All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? <laughs> hey, everyone, how's it going? Right, um, welcome. Uh, let me know if I'm too loud, too soft. If there's any um, audio issues for you, I'll see if I can quickly adjust them uh, before we sort of get right into the meat of things. I'm just adjusting this webcam so I'm nice and centered there. Great. Uh, today, I've got uh, a really cool to topic uh, that I... Um, I really enjoy doing. Uh, this is a bit of a, a showreel type thing, um, an effect that you might have seen a couple of times. It's basically a, a draw-on, and it's great for uh, doing writing or um, trying to get that simulation of an illustration just coming to life. And it's done using a modifier called Build. Now, we're familiar that in uh, Blender, Objects have got modifier stacks. Grease pencil objects also have modifier stacks. Uh, I'm just going to go with outline selected here. Okay, great. So I've prepared this little Melvin um, Mel Melvin uh, picture, and I've got a sketch layer and a colors layer. I've got two layers on here, um, and I might maybe add a few other layers as we go, just to illustrate the point. Ah, yeah, puns, huh? Great, coffee should kick in any minute now. <laughs> okay, um, but uh, what I want to do is create this effect that it's being drawn on by hand. You're looking at version 3.3.4. This is the long-term release version. Um, and the reason I want to show you this first is because in the beta version, this is 3.5, which is uh, probably going to go into official release soon-ish. Um, is this really new added feature that uh, I'm really excited about. So let's just do it the old fashioned way. I go add modifier. I go down here to build and I, oh, well, I've selected the grease pencil object, obviously. I click build. And under mode, sequential is good. Transition is grow. Start delay is at zero frames. And the number of frames that this will animate over is 100. So these are just your basic, basic settings. Here on my timeline, I can now um, hit play. And what you get is something like this, All right? Okay, it looks kind of cool. But then we're sort of thinking, maybe we want the pencils to go on first. And then we want it to color in. Um, fun fact, I didn't do this coloring as I usually do it. I actually used a different brush, which I, again, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, now, one way I could probably do it is, okay, let's say we've got 100 frames. This is where it draws on, all right? And we want uh, to uh, then begin the coloring method. Well, the conventional way of doing this is using our influence. All modifiers allow you to set your influence to a specific layer. Uh, sometimes a material, sometimes a pass. Although pass, let's let's get into that in a in a future video. Um, I'm going to click on the layer and I'm going to select sketch. Right now, this will only affect the sketch layer. So obviously, we've got the color layer sitting there, but the sketch layer is building on. That's great. But then, how do we get the color layer to start? Well, this is when we have to traditionally duplicate the build layer. So we just hit this little specials arrow right here, go duplicate, create a second build modifier in the stack. And this time we change, I'll, I'll just bring this first one here. It's okay, let's call this a sketch build. Okay, so we don't get confused. And let's call this color build. So we know that this is working on the color layer. We change the layer from sketch to color. And now we can do one of two things. The easiest way of figuring this out is to change your start delay. This is the frame at which the effect will kick in. And so because we've gone to 100 frames for the sketch to finish and then we want to color, we just change our start delay to 100, which means that it will wait for frame 100, then start the effect, and then it will run for 100 frames. And so this is what we see. Right, we get our sketch, and then it's colored, right? 
that's really nice, okay? It's a, it's a pretty effect and we can, you know, tweak it and figure out how that works. But it's just gotten a little bit better. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so I'm going to jump over to, uh, this is version uh, 3.5 beta. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open that file that we've just created. Uh, so what I might do is, yeah, look, let's, I'll save this. No, save as Melvin runs 3314, oh, 33, three, yeah, well, it's 3.3. <laughs> um, okay, so I've saved that. Now I'm going to open it up in Blender 3.5. So I'm going to go open, Melvin runs 331, okay. And there it is. Everything should function correctly because... All of our sketch build is still there. It's, oh no, you can't hear anything. You can't hear anything? Can anyone else hear stuff? I'll just check the stream and the stream is saying excellent. Okay, I'm talking, I'm talking, I can hear, okay, good. All right, all right, Jazz E, you might wanna just check your speakers or, or something. It's obviously your end. Um, okay, so where was I? Right, so the build modifier is still there. I'm going to start this process again. I'm going to take off the second modifier. Let's, let's just delete them uh, altogether. And I'll just go back to frame one and we can add the build modifier just as before. Now we've got a um, new timing function. This is number of frames, and they've just basically reversed this in 3.5 beta. We've got the frames that it will run over and the delay, right? I'm gonna switch this to a new setting called natural drawing speed. And what this does is something a little bit more organic. I'm just gonna leave this at 1.2 for now and I'll just hit play, right? And everything's a little bit slow, right? Um, and it's all happening at the same time. And you'll notice that there isn't an option. I mean, there, there is an influence option, but there isn't an option in, under natural drawing speed to set a delay, right? And so this, this is important to note um, with this particular setting. All right, and so I don't want it to draw on like that. We see what's happening. What we need to do is increase the speed factor. So we're going to click on this speed factor here and I'm going to make it at 10 speed, All right? And let's go now. Now this looks a little better, All right? We can sort of see everything drawing on, um, but we sort of have to let it play out or scrub along the timeline to figure out what that speed factor is actually going to give us in terms of um, a finished product. And I think at about 10, it sits around 450. Okay, no, we've got that shading maybe around 500. Great. All right, maybe we can bump that speed factor up to 20. And now we should get something much faster. Right, there we go, it's all drawing on. Now, we could duplicate this build modifier and, and, and change it, but again, we haven't got that delay. Here's the hack, and this is why this little natural drawing speed uh, thing is so much cooler. We've got these keyframes here, right? Because under every um, grease pencil object, every layer gets keyframed where you begin to draw it. So we'll bring this build modifier back. Okay, we're just taking a look at this. And under the color, this is the uh, uh, color layer, which is under sketch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrub along until the sketch is completed. That's about there, about 250. Then I'm gonna grab my keyframe for color. I'm just gonna click and drag and bring that up to 250. And now, watch what happens, right? So, now all we have to do is create one build modifier, but by setting where that keyframe sits, 
we can get this effect. And, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, take off the outline selected here so it looks right, okay? Um, we get this effect uh, working correctly. Um, and can you give him a little hat? Glad you asked, because I was going to show you that we can leave this build modifier on and how we should um, modify pictures, because this isn't something that is, um, you know, oh, no, I've just done the drawing, now I've applied the build modifier. If I go back, I'm going to have to re reapply it again, blah, blah, blah. You, know, it's, uh, you don't have to freak out like that. So why don't we add a few things to this drawing? Someone suggested a little hat. Why not? Let's go with the little hat, shall we? Uh, the first thing I like to do is first disable the uh, modifier. So I'm going to go build and maybe under, under render. So I just disable it by clicking on that real time. What that means is that as I go back, it's not going to show up. Now, the reason we don't see the color is because um, this is the keyframe where the color exists might leave it there as not to confuse things. And we will modify this by erasing some lines, adding some other lines. So maybe the best way to go around this is, let's add another layer for starters, okay? I'm gonna just, I'll leave this at GP layer. And we'll draw the hat first. So we'll go into draw mode. I will get my um, custom pencil. Now, another really cool thing, is that we get this, uh, can, can you all see this? I'm just going to increase the circle there. Can you see that circle? That is the area um, of brush. And so if I'm just drawing like this, okay, that area is actually the influence that the brush is sitting in. Now, of course, I didn't want it on a solid stroke. I need graphite pencil. So we get that nice graphite looking thing. So I'm just going to erase these strokes so we can draw our hat. Now, that's a nice thing to have, but with pencil, it often doesn't work, especially if you've got pressure sensitivity on the radius because it's not going to shrink and grow with exactly the, the tip. So I'm going to switch off display cursor for now. And I'm just going to use my Wacom tablet to just uh, reduce the radius until we get something, okay, maybe a little bit higher. There we go, that's good, right. Let's erase those lines. And now let's give him a hat. Obviously, a cowboy hat would be good, but maybe maybe a top hat might be more fun to draw. So let's let's give him a little top hat. Uh, let's see, how do I draw a top hat? I go ba, 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 like this, and I go, okay, there's gonna be a little thing like this. There's the little band, and round like that. All right, there's a top hat. On the sketch layer, Let's go to our erase tool, but instead of erase stroke, we're just gonna go with erase point. Okay, and now we can just erase those few points around Melvin's head, okay? And finally, you can do this in any mode here, we can uh, take out GP layer, and under this specials menu, merge down, and it will merge it with the sketch. Now, now we've got a hat that is drawn with the sketch layer. And so the keyframe is consistent and all that sort of stuff. Now let's bring back our build modifier and watch what happens. All right, we get Melvin being drawn. Okay. And because the hat was the last thing to be drawn here, uh, it'll do everything else and then it should draw the hat. Okay, so there, there we've got a little bit extra time for the hat to be drawn. So this is where we'll have to bring our color uh, keyframe over a little bit. So let's uh, unlock that. Let's grab that keyframe. I can just click and drag it, but if, you're, if this doesn't work for you, just whenever you're in this window, just hit the G key and then you can move it with your mouse. And so I'm gonna bring in the coloring it can be approximate, right? Okay, there we go. Um, I'm just going to disable that so we can see all the color and make sure that we're working on that keyframe. Uh, and now let's color in that hat. So go into draw mode and I'm gonna bring in, should I go with my marker again? I think I will, but I'll probably need that strength at about 100%. And we want a nice, uh, okay, we obviously want solid stroke and uh, I'm not going to draw out shapes. Drawing out shapes for this effect 
is not great. And this is where you sort of want to go back into that traditional 2D um, handling of things. So uh, let's get this nice gray color here and I'm going to use that marker. Oh boy, this is really thick. Hang on. Sketch. Let's um, do that and let's... Oh boy. Mag, uh, what do we got here? Use additive drawing. Oh, sorry about that bump. Um, if this... Oh boy, no. Color. There we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, that's going to work. Great. Uh, let's make it a little bit lighter so we can see the line work above. Or maybe, maybe we go with something a little bit more maroon. That'll be fun. Okay, so we got this maroon color. Okay. I'm just doing a bit of a coloring in exercise. Oh, that's going to be... Right. Okay, so there we go. Right. And I had to go with solid here. Um, just because uh, usually this marker has a bit of transparency. And what happens is when you have that strength lower, the first time you do a pass, great. But then if you lift up your stylus or your mouse and you do a second pass, it sits on top. And it's good if you know what you're doing, um, but if you're trying to just draw and draw and draw and draw, yeah, look, it... It can get a bit messy if you don't know what you're doing. So I'll just erase those strokes there. We're going to add one more color, I think. Uh, maybe something a bit more orangey here to this here. And maybe a bit of yellow to maybe show a bit of shine. Something lighter on the edges here. Like so. All right. So now we have this top hat. And uh, let's bring back our build sequence. Let's go back to the start and hit play again. And yeah, look, we're looking very cute. Okay, and now we get our hat colored in as well. And there we have, we've got this beautiful draw-on effect. How cool is that? Um, and of course, it goes without saying that we can add more layers and stuff like that um, uh, as well. Uh, we can also adjust, uh, this, this maximum gap is basically the maximum gap between strokes in seconds. So along with the speed factor, we could make the maximum gap between uh, much shorter. So let's say 0.1. And now this is going to maybe appear a little faster, uh, even though we haven't really increased the speed. And that's because it's only going to wait 0.1 of a second before it draws the next stroke along. Where, uh, and so you see that the um, by doing that, we now have decreased where that um, the line work is finished, and we'll just have to adjust that coloring to match that in. And so there, it does take a little bit of tinkering backwards and forwards uh, with this particular effect. Okay, um, and of course, to make it slower, you can just go, okay, maybe we want a one second maximum gap between lines. And so each line will have a larger gap before it draws the next line. Okay, and so it will again appear slower. So there's this bit of a um, give and take between uh, the speed factor and the maximum gap. Now, I'm just going to put that back to point one. Uh, there's other modes as well, but the sequential one is the one you want to use. What happens when we change it to, say, concurrent or additive? Well, let's, let's have a look. Let's go back. Right? Concurrent means all the lines get drawn at the same time. It's a fun effect, but it kind of robs us of that... Um, uh, you know, drawing thing. And this has only got sort of like a number of frames type thing. Similarly, additive. Um, I'll leave that on sequential. And then, of, of course, we've got stuff like shrink or vanish, right? So let's keep it at natural drawing speed. It begins with the drawing and then it erases it. And so... 
This isn't exactly going to go backwards, um, and it erases it in the same order because you can see it doesn't do it like a reverse, okay? And because that keyframe for the um, the the coloring was later on, then it just pops on and then begins to erase. But the order in which erases is very interesting, right? It's exactly the same order that if we were to put it at grow, begins. So you see how it starts with the horn uh, and then uh, it goes on. It's exactly the same. Um, okay, so I've got a few minutes here, actually. So, uh, but you don't want to see. You don't want to see my news feeds and all that. Um, so if there's any questions about that, I might take that as I might sort of tinker on uh, with with a few things. I'd be happy to. Um, let's see here. I haven't explored much of Grease Pencil. I had no idea it could do this. It seems like I miss a lot in Blender. <laughs> Makes me want to get back into Blender more. I'm glad uh, I could I could help sort of pique that interest. Uh, and yeah, um, the thing I really like about Grease Pencil objects is that like curves and like meshes, it's got its own set of modifiers. Um, and it's also got a set of effects as well. <laughs> yes, uh, I know. It's just because I've got I've hidden my toolbar, and so when I yeah, it's a thing. I'll try not to do it again. Um, you can always you know do other things with effects on top of it, but that's sort of the the, the build effect uh, as it were. Now, custom range I don't really like to play with uh, exactly um, because it does tend to muck things up a little bit, and so. What I've got here is a range that goes from 1 to 125, and then we're done. But it doesn't shrink that down to 125. It says that, okay, at 125, bang, right? 125, it's drawn naturally, and then at 125 exactly, bang. 126, it's all there. Uh, and so, like, starting... All right, so let's say we started at 25 frames instead. It means that... It'll, it kind of does some really weird things. And so this custom range works with some of the other timings, but not with natural drawing mode. So I wouldn't recommend uh, that to be uh, something that we use with natural drawing mode. I do like the fade a little bit. Let me show you how this one works. I'm going to bump that factor right up to one. Uh, and let's bump that opacity up to one. Now... I'm going to zoom in here so you can really get a, a good idea of, uh, of this, right? Do you see how it draws on? Right? It's almost as if you can sort of see those... It's almost like a watercolour pencil just bleeding on like that, right? Um, another one, thickness, is really cool too because now we get that bleeding thickness. Um, this kind of reminds me of the Dexter intro, remember, with little... Blood splots and so, yeah, and never mind. I think it's maybe the paper and the, and the redness there. Um, but it's also going to do it for the coloring, so it may not work so great for, for that effect. Uh, but that's another couple of uh, things that you can do. Now, in terms of object, I haven't tried this yet, but I imagine it works much like this. So I'm going to get my. Uh, Where's the 3D cursor? There's a 3D cursor there. And I might add an empty plane axis, and I'm just going to move this over here. Ah, right. Now, I didn't want that. I didn't want a keyframe on that. Right. Um, and on Melvin, I'm going to select this to be the object. Let's see what happens. There you go, right? And if I was to, say, move that object, you could say that it starts from wherever that object is. So instead of drawing from that particular spot which the drawing uh, obviously commences from, we can get this to draw from the top hat or from this arm or the foot or this hand. And so this, again, gives us added control for this effect. So now we see that it all kind of goes from, you know, radiates out from where that object is and even the colors do that. So we've got a bit of control with this effect, which is really, really nice. Um, and again, we do have that influence, but um, I do recommend with this natural drawing speed thing that's in uh, 3.5, um, 
you just stick to one and you move those keyframes along to where you want that particular layer to kick in, the build effect should take care of the rest. It doesn't currently do this with the previous effects in 3.3 or even 3.4. And I'm gonna be looking at a feature in 3.4 next week that, are, that I think is, is gonna be really, really cool. Um, so what was it, or was there one more thing that I needed to add to this? No. Why am I forgetting? I don't think so. Um, I was literally going to ask how to control the start. Yes. <laughs> Again, you've got to remember that this is organic. Um, this is supposed to be the type of effect that just sort of builds on naturally. You'll also see that I've got a paper background like I showed you how to create last week. And another thing you can always try is changing your blend modes to something like multiply or um, uh, something else to... Oh yes, I know what I was gonna show you. Um, for those people who, who don't know how to get your hands on version 3.5. Uh, so I'll show you that now, uh, but like multiply modes or regular modes, however that works, sometimes can give you a much cooler effect, especially with this kind of um, uh, drawing, right? Now, how do you get your hands on it? I know that most of you will know there will be someone who's going to ask this question, and so I'm going to show you right now. You go to blender.org, okay? Um, you go to your download page, right? I'm gonna click on that. You'll be able to download the latest release, but if you scroll down to Go Experimental, and you click on Download Blender Experimental, you get this page. And this is the daily builds. You've got all these stable releases of past releases up to a point. Um, and even if uh, you, you're having problems with the current build of 3.4, if that's what you're using, uh, or even the long-term release, there will be one that was compiled very recently. I can see that 3.3.4 um, stable was compiled on the 23rd of February. And I'm recording this on well, the next day. Uh, so uh, you can always get that. Uh, here is Blender 3.5 Beta, and you can also try out some of the features in 3.6 Alpha if you wanted to. That's not all, okay? Up here, there is a menu item that says Latest Changes, and if you click on that, you'll be brought to these Blender Release Notes page. And what I really like about this is that at any, um, uh, version, here we've got the currently active, here we've got the older versions. Let's click on Blender 3.5 Beta. Now what it does is gives you some of the changes. And so here, specifically for Grease Pencil, we click on that, and it will show you some of those uh, Grease Pencil additions, such as what we saw before, Display Cursor uh, over here. Modifiers, okay? This is where we've got our natural drawing speed modifier showing up here, right? How cool is this? And so this will explain what it is and where you can uh, see it. Now, I'm gonna answer a question from a little while ago. Um, what I wanna go is, I wanna go back to the release notes. Do you remember when, um, I might've done a presentation last year at the Blender conference about the storyboarding um, add-on? Well, it is now back, I think, in the 3.4 stable release uh, under user interface. No, it's under add-ons, sorry. I'm just gonna go back here. Add-ons, uh, exporter, importer, no. Where did I see it? This is making a liar out of me. I'm gonna go back to long-term release. Let's see, 3.3 uh, LTS, add-ons. Huh. They take it off 3.4. Exporter. New add-on. Yes, here it is. New add-ons, new story pencil add-on for storyboarding in add-ons contributor, right? So you'll be able to find it in the current release of 3.4. You just have to go to the add-ons page. I'll show you where that is. Okay, you go edit, preferences, add-ons, and there'll be official, and there'll be community. And we can go story pencil. 
storyboard pencil, uh, story pencil, storyboard tools, and it's there. Okay, so um, look, that'll give you a little bit of insight into all of those new things. So um, look, I like showing these new releases, even though you know they're not the official release just yet. Um, because sometimes there's a tool that I'm really excited about, and as soon as you know it's coming up, then you know that you can start thinking about how you're going to use it. Next week, I've got a really cool uh, tool to show you uh, that I've been tinkering out around with. Um, so I hope you, you come back for that. I don't want to spoil it too much. Uh, but look, guys, thank you so much for being with me again this week, and I'll be back again next week for CG Cookie. Um, and of course, you know, do all the things. Subscribe to the channel. Go over to cgcookie.com and maybe become a free member for a while. I don't know. Uh, all of that stuff. I should be really plugging uh, that side of things a little bit more. But uh, thank you again. I have to go. And yes, you'll be able to rewatch this in archive. I'm going to do a little edit. I generally edit out the first 10 minutes of the countdown, but that takes about a day or so to, uh, to catch up to the feed. So um, yeah, it's done already. Um, I'm only given half an hour by CG Cookie. I'm sorry. Sorry, Angel, um, but uh, I try to really pack in as much as I can. So I'll see you all later, guys. Bye for now.